Good evening, everybody. December the 20th, Monday, about 11.40. Three and a half hours before the daily closes. For the people that have been watching my video and have been following SHIB, well, there you go, guys. Have you been following my Bitcoin technical analysis? SHIB just did a monstrous 20% rally today. I told you that, I mentioned that the daily was looking like this. Okay, we got a huge daily coming down like that. It's a very nice symmetric type of chart. The daily was about to cross over as well. Okay, and it crossed over, so we ended up getting a rally, or it's about to cross over. The next one coming up is probably probably um ICP, very low RSI. This thing's gonna spike up quite a bit in my opinion. Every time it reaches low RSI like that, it ends up doing 300% or more. <laughs> So it's certainly possible for us to get some sort of monstrous gains right now on ICP. So I'm gonna just jump right into my live trade right now. I'm trading Wi-Fi and I've made a lot of mistakes in this trade, but I think that my successes in the trade highly outweigh what I've done for mistakes wise. So here's my position right now. I'm in it for 100 and ninety thousand dollars around there yeah one hundred ninety thousand dollars i was actually down two and a half percent earlier so the most that i was down on this trade was about three percent so we got to 32.9 or 39.200 so i was down five thousand dollars at most on this trade but my rr is pretty set after i ended up getting into a position here my rr was basically set above somewhere there and that's when i know that i would have been wrong so my rr was roughly 1.7 2 so i'm going for a possible 5.74 percent gain here which is really really large in my opinion but realistically i'll probably just take my profit early around here which of course ends up giving me a lower than one to one rr I highly recommend to always have a stop loss before you enter a trade. That's the number one rule of trading. Have a stop loss before you enter a trade. If you have entered a trade before having a stop loss, that's not a good thing. Okay, so right now I'm looking at, I'm not sure really what this possible count is in here. I'm not sure at all in terms of from the bottom, maybe this is the one, two, three, four, five, something like that. That, that would make sense, right? One, two, three, four, five, something like that, maybe. Um, there's no other way to really look at it. So let's get into this Elliott Wave technical analysis of mine and talk about this specific structure right here. We're going to clear everything up from the beginning, and I'm going to show you guys, first of all, the basics of Elliott Wave theory. Okay, so this is a typical impulse wave going to the upside. Just like that. Okay. Within each wave, you're going to find fractals as well on different time frames. If you go to lower time frame, you'll see these fractals divide up in here. Okay. This is a typical impulse wave going to the upside. Like that. There are a lot of rules. One common rule is that wave three, which is basically this uh, wave, sorry, wave one. And wave five can do something like this. They have the potential to do this. Not always, but they can. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna exaggerate a little bit because it's easier to draw. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw like that. This is a really good lesson that I'm giving you guys. Something like that, okay? And this wave wave the five can do the same thing okay now I'm up actually about three hundred and seventy one dollars so this way five can do something like that one two three four five in a wedge and then when it breaks it usually breaks to the downside actually always it breaks the downside you can see from what I've seen thus far two three four five this this one right here is tricky okay the last wave there is tricky because i can't zoom in further okay there we go 
It's tricky because the wave 5 often breaks a little bit above and it scares the fuck out of people. It scares the fuck out of people between wave 1 and 3 forming a resistance. It overthrows is what I call it. it overthrows right up there and then it comes to the downside like that, okay? So we have to remember this basic, the basics first of all. So we have to identify where this wave structure begins. A lot of the times, we're not able to identify it as soon as it starts. We're able to identify it, identify it in hindsight, after many formations have formed. I wasn't able to identify it until almost up there. So let's talk about this particular formation, okay? This is most likely some sort of truncated wave up there, okay? Because if you look at it closely, you're seeing a one, two, three, four, and five structure in there. So let's talk about this as well. Let's talk about A, B, C structures in a corrective wave. In a typical zigzag corrective wave, you're seeing that, okay? One, two, three, four, five. And then within the B, you're seeing yourself an ABC, okay? Like that. But what's more important is that C can be double bottomed like that. It can also be truncated like that, which is much smaller, okay? It still shows the five wave format. So what we're counting in here, first of all, is one, two, three, four, five, very clearly. And then in hindsight, we're seeing that this goes like this, okay? And you know that that's a C, it's a really good C going upwards. So, so the B, like that, the B structure has three, okay? And it has one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. A, B, C. So the B structure in there makes an A, B, C, just like how this makes an A, B, C, but kind of reversed. Okay, that's kind of, that's how it goes. That's a theory. And we can see five very clear waves in here. Like that. Then if you go down even further, you can see, you can see that because this made the A, Okay, that made the B, that's the C, which is a very complicated structure in my opinion. You seeing it now? Okay, that's the C in here. So this makes an A. I'm just gonna make this yellow to make it more visible. Actually blue would probably be a lot more visible. A, B, C, and then we can zoom in very closely here, take a look at, see there's some overlap in there, which is fine, as long as wave 1 is not the smallest, check, that one's bigger, so it counts as a C, so now I'm saying to myself, 1, 2, 3, 4, boom, 5 finishes in there, so we're actually entirely done counting this particular wave structure right here okay so because we're done that wave structure we know that this is where it begins like that so because we know that's where it begins well we can easily try to catch a trade in here so let's break it down just based on the biggest fractals that we see we're gonna call this guy here a one, a two, somewhere in there is a three, a four, and I was looking for a five in there, okay? I was looking for somewhere a five in there, but a lot of the times, let's just say this was the five. One, two, three, four, five. There are a lot of rules, okay? One rule is that for example, this can be a 5 in here. Okay, somewhere in there like that. 
But this particular five, if I, if I could zoom in as much as I can, I'm zooming in as much as I can, can make an ending fifth wave diagonal like this, okay? It makes an ending fifth, it's hard to notice it, but you can catch it for sure. That fifth wave can make some sort of ending fifth wave diagonal in there. So then that, that four, that four basically starts with a one, two, three, four, five. And the five can sometimes just go boom up, right? So so we're looking at it right now, we're looking at it on, on like a small time frame, if you notice it. Where the heck did I just draw it? There we go. So over here, you don't really notice it much. You gotta really zoom in to see the details in there. One, two, three, four, then one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys now how how my structures are drawn based on that. I like to keep a clean chart, so I always make sure I delete things like that. Okay, so now, now I've I thought that this was gonna make something like this in here. And then we finish. Something like a one, two, three, whatever this is, four, boom, we're done. But it did not actually do that at all. Instead, it does something like that in there, okay? To finish off the final fifth structure. So we look at it very, very closely. If I clear everything up right now, okay? We see that this is where the first wave began, pretty much. Okay, this is where the first wave began and it does something just like that. And also just like that. It's hard to see right now, but when I draw it out for you, it'll make more sense, okay? And then now this one makes the first touch up there, the two, the three, the four, and that's the fifth, right up there. So that's making a wedge shaped pattern in there which is incredibly nice in my opinion. So now that officially completes the five waves within here. So we zoom all the way far back. We're seeing that this makes the one, the two, this is probably a three, a four, and now that's a five. Okay, that's a five up there. Whereas this one makes the one, two, three, this is a four and a five. So there's an ending fifth wave diagonal within this wave. Do you see it now? One, two, three, four, four, and this one's five right there. Okay? Just like that. One, two, three, four, five. And then we have to go even further to dissect it we can count this okay we can count it I'm gonna show you one two this one's two I don't want to I want to use one smaller with the waves Let's see do you see that five I'm gonna show you guys it with the wave count so that makes five perfectly in there this one does as well one two three four five this one does the A, B, C, D, and E. Perfect waves. A, subdivide to three. A, B, C, D, and E. Therefore, wave four must alternate and do A, B, C. So this guy here did an A, B, and C, okay? Just like that. And now the last wave, we're looking for a wave that finishes. Originally thought it was gonna do something just like that and finish but it didn't, okay? So then the wave count ends up becoming this instead. One, probably an ABC somewhere in there. Three, four, and five. And this one is just probably a B wave up or a two wave up or something like that, okay? So then this is the high of it. Now this officially completes it, completes the five wave count. This is a really difficult Elliott wave lesson in my opinion, but it's a very good one. And then in here, we get a lower high. It's getting lower and lower. So I was able to draw something like that. Okay, something just like that and like that. And what we end up getting is a pattern like this. Get a pattern like that. 
a wedge, right? You would agree. We got the resistances, resistance, resistance, resistance. And just so you guys know, a lot of people have been wanting to get into the Discord group. For the last few days of Gen of uh, December, I'm gonna open up the yearly membership just for like three or four days where it's gonna be 600 bucks for a year. That comes with my course one, two, and three as well. And then in 2018, I'm gonna be raising the price, or sorry, 2022, I'm gonna raise the price to $800 for a month, or sorry, for a year. Why? Oh man, there's a lot of content in here. You have no idea how much. It's like a library of information. There's 81 short lessons, 39 long lessons, maybe 500 live trades, bit technical analysis every day, trading with my group, really active. Um, like I'll show you, it's insane. I do giveaways all the time. Like I do like at least $2,000 of giveaways a month. 81 lessons, 39 long lessons, about a few hundred, maybe 500 live trades, Bitcoin technical analysis almost every day now, a channel of analysis that I'm trading, and the group chat here. So it's gonna go up to 800 in January. Um, and yeah, so I would suggest you sign up for the New Year special. Let's get right back into this. I don't wanna shill it all day, you know? So then this, builds up like that notice the top resistance so it breaks down see the blue line it breaks out of the wedge it breaks out of the wedge here the, the, the wedge goes like that one two three four the wedge right there okay so it breaks out of the wedge this one here was a false breakout or breakdown rather so what we see is that this forms a resistance region, right? So I was able to draw that triangle. And then if you take this this one arrow that's left on the screen, this one right there, that point, combined with the wedge breakdown resistance, what do you get? You get yourself a massive resistance, which rejected it, okay? Yeah, so I entered a little bit early. As you can see, I entered early here, down 1400. I legitimately thought that this descending triangle was going to fail. Legitimately. Then it broke to the upside. So I was waiting for a 2.5-3% drop almost. Okay, but it didn't break above here. You know, you don't want, you want, it didn't break above here with thick conviction. So I never took my loss. There's no need to take my loss at all. Okay, so now what we're seeing is we're seeing a break to the downside. We're definitely getting some sort of resistance like that. Definitely seeing some resistance. Probably some channel work in here as well. Okay, well let's go to a higher time frame now that we've beat this to death on a low time frame. So definitely seeing a channel kind of form. It's been bullish above which EMAs about it's been bullish above the the five EMA about the five minute fifty five EMA. Uh, we have to find the best EMA that supports our that our idea of it being bullish above that one. So I probably say the eight minute is really good because that's one that's bounced kind of above it. Then here is wave four territory almost wave four right there. Yeah, something like that. The fifty five EMA. So then now we're going to take the Fibonacci retracement range of the entire structure right here is where it began. Always go from left to right around there. All right. Zoom in as close as you can. Get it on right. I like to be accurate. OCD. And then say to yourself, it's going to hit at least 236 of the entire wave. It's going to hit 236. That's my belief. Even if it was the most bullish coin in the world, it's still gonna hit 236 probably. Okay. I think it's gonna hit it. So therefore my target's gonna be take profit. It's here. Actually, it's gonna I'm gonna decide there. Three thirty-seven thousand two hundred dollars. That's gonna get me thirty-seven thousand two hundred. I bought a four thousand eight hundred dollar payday. So this is gonna be a really wonderful live trade. 
to show you. And that's how I was able to deduce that this is a top by doing an Elliott wave analysis on here. I wanted to get it to there, right? So, yeah. And now I didn't take my profit or my loss because why would you need to take a loss if it never broke above that green massive line, okay? That you need to stay in the game, in my opinion. You gotta stick to your stop loss. The best time to take a loss, in my opinion, is when you know that your trade is wrong. Not just to minimize your loss, but when you know the trade has gone against you. That's a better way to take a loss, in my opinion. It's been about five minutes. So now I'm very in profit, okay? Very in profit. We're still on our way down here to the 236 Fibonacci level here. That's exactly where I'm going to take my profit. What I like to do is I like to look for, for example, the middle of this, okay? The, the middle of here would probably be somewhere just like that. Would you agree? That white line that I have here, or this big ass green line. I'm very calm trading today. Have you guys noticed that? I'm, my demeanor is very calm, collected. We all need to make sure that we don't add emotions to trading. If you add emotions to trading, it's going to skew the way that you think. So try your best to stay calm when you're trading <clears throat> and never overreact. It's going to cloud your judgment. Always try to be objective. If you add emotions to it, it's going to cloud the way you think and you won't be able to make rational decisions. The thing about technical analysis is that when you do TA, you have to always be on top of what's going on. If you step away for 20 minutes, come back, right? When you're day trading, a lot could have changed by then. And you need to, and then you're going to have to catch up with your analysis. And then it's going to be harder for you to make a decision to react if something goes the worst possible way. So I'm in it for a really good profit right now already. It's only $200 down, but... We have 1.7% to go, and that's going to nail me a pretty good close. I'm going to go for a 373, 373, 00, for $4,400 here, and that would be wrap it up here. So right now, we're just kind of, we're, we're kind of just, I don't like doing on this chart too much, the technical analysis, because there's not a lot of room. So I'm just going to go back to here. We're getting support temporary support right here as we can see right around this region and we might even get a channel support here let me just see if we actually got channel support in any way whatsoever because we do see this here right we do see that I want to see if it's gonna actually bounce to the upside now because of like here these regions and also because of the channel support so because of that, we might get a bounce to the top side, a really decent one. But now the 30 minutes crossed over, see? It's just crossed over hard. So I'm not gonna take my profit early or anything just because we got some slight resistance to come down. It's important to stay strong in the game and focus on your target, which is gonna be 37.3 roughly, or 37.2 roughly. Now we're gonna see if this is gonna hold in any way or if it's just gonna drop. If it drops, it's gonna be a very violent drop below these two supports that are temporary. Okay, so now it's resuming the downtrend here. Channel doesn't hold whatsoever. Completely cracks to the downside, up $2,500 now. Doing very well. I'm gonna put my limit up here now for five Wi-Fi at three, zero, zero. I think that will be the perfect place to close this particular long position of mine. Would you guys agree? Right in the middle of this congested area that lasted for about three hours. Assume that it could be a very bullish retracement. Be happy with the profit that I take. And that I grew this account from, I think $20,000 to 50,000. After this trade, or after this trade, I'll be at 47,000. So I grew, I'd almost doubled it in about three days. Four days maybe, so it's pretty solid trade here to be taking. I'm very tired. Today um, I'm going to trade with you guys almost all night. Tomorrow I'm going to be off in the evening because I'm going to be going out for a date night. 
and it's almost Christmas as well, right? You know, so it's nice to actually be able to spend time with your loved ones and your family, etc. So this is a really big drop to the downside here, as you've noticed here. There's no per there's no channel at all. It's just going to capitulate very soon, in my opinion, and bam, we're going to get a nice profit right here. We're getting a little bit of hesitation coming to the downside, but it's only one more percent. So I think that it's going to be more than okay to drop very soon. Uh, based off of price action, it's not looking good for the bulls in any way. Just a series of drops, drops, drops. One minute's going down, everything's going down, up to even the 30 minutes going down. 45 is going down soon too, but the 30 minutes the big candle, right? So I think we, we will be able to reach the 33.3 regions very soon here. And then I'm going to be up a, oh shit, an EMA. But not really that relevant to an 8-minute chart, so I don't like that. Broke below the 55 EMA already. That's really beautiful. I'm extremely tired tonight, actually. I might call it early. I, I'm pretty confident we're going to get a bounce here, though. Like, I, like we're going to definitely target that easily, in my opinion. I think that this is only, like, the first wave coming down. One... Like, let me, let me talk about the wave structure here. Like, ooh, it's going back up in there. Trying to, at least. I don't want it to do that. I'll update you soon. It's trying to get above here. Trying to see it broke there, 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 there. Here, and also the support trend line. So the chances of it getting back up there is extremely rare right now. I don't think it's going to get up there at all. I decided to enter this trade earlier because of the ending fifth wave diagonal that we're most likely seeing in here. So the way that I see this particular trade is this one here is a one, two, three, four, and definitely a five in there somewhere. Okay. Just something like that. And then this makes a one, two, three, four, and I'm looking for a five in there. So within the fifth wave over here, what we see is we see an ending fifth wave diagonal that forms. It forms just like that. So this one here makes basically a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and then eventually it breaks to the downside, okay? So that's really important to understand why I took that trade there. And now we see it breaking down. So we take the Fibonacci retracement of the entire wave here, not just a single wave. And I'm gonna take mine at a very reasonable place. Okay, I'm gonna take mine. If you take a look on the one minute chart, you're gonna see this particular resistance right here, right there, okay? Also, this one's gonna make some sort of channel coming to the downside. Okay, you're gonna see it right here, the channel, okay? So it tries to get back into it, but it fails. That red line snapped below already, broke down, tries to get back up, couldn't actually get up there. So my close is coming up right now, very, very close. I'm gonna be closing it right here at 37,300 for $4,000. Almost coming up right now. Give me a little bit more of a push. The close is just about to come up. Give me a tiny bit push. I'm right there, I'm right there. They're chipping away. One got nibbled up, boom, guys. $4,500, fuck yeah.